Welcome back. In this video, we are going to be taking a close look at the Minnesota Pipestone Genuine by Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith writes about the Minnesota Pipestone as a warm, soft, earthly pink, Minnesota Pipestone is semi-transparent to semi-opaque and granulates beautifully in washes. It is as permanent as the rock from which it is made. Our Minnesota Pipestone is created from pipestone in exactly the same shade as the stone that the Plains Indians revered and reserved for the making of their pipes. Milled in small batches, it honours history and lives up to contemporary expectations. The combination of a historic pipestone with the modern synthetics is spellbinding. American Pipestone is the stone that unifies our people in a time of transition. The sacred mineral was the stone of choice for the legendary Sioux Peace Pipes. Travelling through Pipestone Country, Minnesota, one can almost hear the murmur of the past. The warm, muted tones of the Pipestone foster an introspective creative flow. Minnesota Pipestone is a Series 2 pigment, classified as excellent in light fastness, semi-transparent, non-staining and granulating. Welcome back, the paints have dried and this is Minnesota Pipestone. First impression, it is a heavily granulating colour, so if you like your granulation and you like your browns, this is a good colour to go for. It also gradates very well, there is no cauliflowering in any of it, and can I just say how beautiful the texture of the Minnesota Pipestone is on hot pressed paper. It's like this dark, stormy, sandstorm kind of texture and it's beautiful and if you want to take a look, good look at this gorgeous texture i do upload high risk scans of this test sheet and all other test sheets i create on this channel over on my patreon which is patreon.com forward slash ottocano it's just such a lovely 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 texture in terms of hue let's look at other colors we are looking at in this series and i would say that they are kind of this is Minnesota Pipestone and this is Sedona and they are kind of similar. Sedona is a lot more red though, whereas Minnesota Pipestone has a slight more pinkish hue to it. It's a lovely halfway between the red fish shirt that we looked at in the last episode and the Sedona Genuine. It's like if those two colours had babies then you would get Minnesota Pipestone but there is no sparkle. It's a completely non-sparkly granulating colour. Let's take a look at other Daniel Smith colours. I would say in terms of hue, it, the closest one is Burnt Sienna by Daniel Smith. And then let's look at Holbein. Not really any of the Holbeins. Let's look at Schmincke's. I mean, it's similar to the colours around here, the Mother Brown, Burnt Sienna, Maroon Brown, Transparent Sienna, but the Minnesota Pipestone is slightly different in hue. It's a lot more warmer, softer, gentler colour, and of course is granulating, which none of the normal browns are. 
So if you are really into your browns and you're very particular about having different shades of browns and you want something that is a granulating alternative, then Minnesota Pipestone is a good choice for you. In terms of opacity, I would say that it is semi-transparent, which is what it Daniel Smith classifies it as because I can see a little bit of brown on top of the black stripe. As for lifting, it is very, very easy pigment to lift. I had no problem getting the paper back to white, so I agree that it is a non-staining colour. For glazing, it is a little bit harder to have a heavily granulating colour that is very easy to lift, and that's the same for this. Although I have to say, it performed better than the red fuchsia I did, so I think you could get away with doing some light glazing with this colour. It reacted very well to gauzing, very strong colours, and lovely, lovely texture. It didn't react at all to salt. You can just see dots of where the salt has been, but no real major reactions that you can notice. However, this texture might be good for a certain type of rock or stone. So even though it doesn't react much to salt, it might be a useful technique to use if you do a lot of landscapes. For putting paint wet on wet, it does not spread much at all. It does spread a little bit in that I can see a very, very, very subtle tinge of the soft brown colour all over, but you really, really have to look at it and look for it. And it probably won't even show on the camera or when I scan it because it is such a subtle tint to the point that you can pretty much say that it, yeah, it doesn't spread much at all. Now, what was surprising to me was when I came to do the color mixes, because the swatches came out pretty dark, I would say not very, very dark, medium dark, I was expecting to be able to create a lot of stronger mixes than I managed with the Minnesota Pipestone. And that tells me that Minnesota Pipestone have very low tinting strength. Tinting strength is how well or how strongly it can affect another color when you mix with it. And Minnesota Pipestone has barely any. So if you want to mix colors that honors the hue of the Minnesota Pipestone, you will only get very, very faint colors. So I wouldn't call Minnesota Pipestone a good color to do lots of color mixing with. It's much better to be used on its own. It does have gorgeous, gorgeous, heavy granulation though. So as I said, if you are into your browns and you love granulation, I would highly recommend giving this color a go. So what do I think of this color? It's a soft brown. It's a useful color in terms of giving you that granulation that you don't necessarily get with the more common browns. However, if you do do a lot of color mixes and you use colors as mother colors, this is not the color for you because you're gonna need so much of the Minnesota Pipestone to compete with any strongly colored paints. Would I have this on my palette? No, purely because I have such strong, intense colors on my palette. To put this on my palette would mean I would be going through so many tubes of Minnesota Pipestone just to compete with the brighter, more intense colors. How about you? What did you think of this color? Would you have this color on your palette? Do let me know in the comments down below if you use this color already and what you love using this color for. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!